on the, the anointing in Jesus' name. I thank and I praise you. And my tongue is the pen of a ready writer, and your words will be written in the hearts of the hearers in Jesus' name. I thank and I praise you for that revelation knowledge that you open the eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus. And Satan, I remind you, power is broken in this place in the name of Jesus. Every foul, wicked, and unclean spirit, every hindering spirit, I bind you. I break your power. I command you to go from this place in Jesus' name. Loose that anointing to break that yoke in Jesus' name. I lose the love, joy, and the peace of the Lord in Jesus' name. In Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory. And all the people say, Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Okay. Is that for me? Oh. I thought it was bigger print. Yeah, yeah. Here, use mine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I can see, I can see. <laughs> All right, it's going to be very simple, okay? Very simple message. Let's go and turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Even though it's a very simple message, many times people forget, okay? Especially when you have troubles. And like you, you know well, uh, in the world right now, it's a mess. Huh? Maybe some of you, you're having trouble. Sometimes people lose their jobs. Finances are down. Family members are sick, okay? But, you know, you have no peace. Hello? Okay? You have no peace. And so this is not what God wants. Because God is a God of peace. Amen? So he wants you to have peace. And so when there is no peace, that means that you're not really looking to him. You're not looking to his word. And many times people don't even know his word. Okay? But there's nothing like the peace of God, especially nowadays. Nowadays. My husband and I have been here almost for a year. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I had to remind myself of the word of God to keep the peace of mind. I'm talking about peace of mind. Okay? You, if you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you already have peace because he is our peace. The moment you receive him, I don't know, those of you who have received Jesus, I don't know about you, but immediately there's such a tremendous peace. Amen? I'm talking about inside of you, okay? But as you went on, you don't have peace of here. You don't have peace of mind. And that is very, very important. You can always tell people who don't have peace of mind, Okay, because they're nervous, okay, they're anxious, they're fearful, fearful, okay. But if you do have that peace of mind, you're not fearful, you're not anxious, because you know that he takes care of you. Amen. You heard the testimony. It shows you that he takes care of us. Amen. And so because of that, we have to know what he says. Okay? If, let's say, you want to go to a restaurant. Yeah. Nowadays. <laughs> okay? And your husband or your friend or your wife or whoever wants to go to this restaurant. And they drive there, but they don't say anything to you. Hello? Okay? So by the time you get there, what is this? I want to go there. And there's strife. Amen? Nowadays, my husband and I, what do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? I don't know. <laughs> and it's back and forth. <laughs> Amen? But you see, when you know what God says in his word, then no matter what happens, 
you will have peace. Okay? Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. And then he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Amen? See, the key is this. Do you believe God? Now, I don't mean become religious. Good Lord. Okay? You don't have to pray and say, God. Because <laughs> he'll say, huh? <laughs> You're his children, amen? We received him, we're his children. So we just come to the Father. Okay? We don't have to be afraid. Let's go to Philippians 4. Then if you know the scripture. But do you do what it says? Ah, there's the, there's the key. Do you do what it says? Okay. Okay. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Gee, I can't even find it in your book. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Let's go to um, verse 6. <clears throat> the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. How many of you have anxiety right now? At least one person is. Okay, two. Come on now. You know, sometimes there is anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Otherwise, he wouldn't be saying this. He said, be anxious for nothing. No thing. Okay? I like anxious better. <laughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Okay? Now notice what it says. In everything by prayer, whether you're anxious, fearful, or whatever. Okay? In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. In other words, you pray to God. You're in a situation that causes anxiety and fear. You pray to God, okay? But it says here, prayer in several cases, with thanksgiving. Why is it with thanksgiving? Because when you pray, you know God's here. God hears you, amen? Let's turn to the book of 1 John. Keep your finger here in the Philippians. There's nothing like having your own Bible. <laughs> First John 5, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that is in God and his word. <clears throat> that if we ask anything, excuse me, <clears throat> underline anything. Amen? If we ask anything according to his will, he doesn't hear us. Ah! He, <laughs> he hears us. You see, I played the devil because he says he doesn't hear you. Hello. But God says here in his word that he hears you. Amen? You have to believe that. You have to believe what he says in his word. God and his word are one. God cannot lie. What he says in his word is true. He cannot lie. When he says he hears you, that means he hears you. Okay? It's not like a husband and wife. You say something, they don't hear. <laughs> or they don't want to hear. <laughs> Amen? Amen? God hears you, it says. And it says, if we know that he hears us, how do we know that he hears us? Pray tell. Because this big ear comes out of the sky and says, yes. No. How do we know that he hears us? Okay? Because you just read it. This is his word. This is what he is saying. He hears us, whether you feel it or not. Whether the devil says he didn't hear you or not, 
he hears you. That's why we must always believe his word. Amen? If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What is his will? Where do you find his will? Right here. Is it his will for you to be free of anxiety and fear? Is it his will for you to be healed? Is it his will for your family members to be saved? Is it his will for you to have no lack? That's his will. Amen? You find it in the word of God. Again, if you don't know what the word says, hallelujah. <laughs> and it says, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, underline that, whatever we ask, we know, we know that we have the petition that we have desired of him. Amen? Hallelujah. Back to Philippians 4. <clears throat> okay. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So because you know he hears you, you already thank him for it. If you listen to my prayer, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen? Because he hears already. Okay? <sighs> Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your minds to Christ Jesus. Your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Amen? So when you know that you know that you know that God hears your prayer, guess what? You will have peace. Amen? And then it says, gee, something is missing in here. Verse 7. Oh, here it is. <laughs> this is not my Bible, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's Mother's Day. <laughs> all right, and it says in verse 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? You ask, you thank him, you know he hears your, your voice, your prayer, and he will answer your prayer. And because of that, you will have what? Peace of mind. We're talking about peace of mind. If you have received Jesus, you already have peace in your heart, in your spirit. Amen? But we're talking about peace of mind. And many of the people don't have peace of mind. Okay? So and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? We're talking about the mind. Hello? Now, in order to maintain that peace of mind that God has given you, there's something you have to do. You see, God has done everything that he needs to do. Amen? I mean, everything. Okay? Now, here, we have to do something. In order for you and I to maintain the peace of mind that God already has given us, you got to do verse 8. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, true, whatsoever things are noble, just, pure, lovely, of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on what the devil thinks, says. No, think on these things, the things that are pure, good, lovely, of a good report. Amen? Where do you find that? In the word of God. All the things that are good, pure, lovely, of a good report are in this word. Amen? So what do you have to do? You have to think of the promises of God. Think on these things, the word says. Amen? Now, the promises of God are in the word of God. That means you and I have to get into God's word in order to find the promises of God. 
Hello? If you have lack in his word, he said in Psalms 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. That's what he said. Okay? And he said that he will take care of you and I. He said, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This is where you really have to look to God. Okay? If you are not in the word of God, I challenge you, get in that word and find out the promises of God for you. You'll be so surprised. And another thing too, okay, the promises of God. He doesn't lie. What he promises you, he will do. If you believe him. He's not like people. I promise you, I'll be there at 2 o'clock. And they don't show up. Hello. Or your children say, I promise you, I clean up my room. And they don't. Amen. All right. <clears throat> what I say? Okay. Let's go to verse 25. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, 25. Jesus. Now, the, this is Jesus speaking. Does he lie? Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, do not worry about your life. Don't worry. Amen? What you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Okay? In other words, don't worry. He, if you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, he is your father. He will provide for you, period. My husband and I have been all over the world, okay? There are times when he only had some coins in his pocket at the grocery store. Remember that? And we counted the coins. And then when we picked out things, we made sure that there was enough money in the coins to pay for it. And at the, at the uh, uh, register, we watched. <laughs> and his pocket goes, clink, 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 clink. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, somebody tapped him on his shoulder. And he said, Pastor, you don't know me, but I, I know you. God wants me to pay for your groceries. Hallelujah. Don't you know God knew that we brought all those coins? <laughs> but he has sent someone to what? Provide for us. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he will do for one, he will do for the other. Okay? So don't worry what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. Okay? Um. Your clothes. Don't worry about it. You don't have to be all fashionable. Okay? God will provide. I remember my daughter Sharon. This is years ago. Financially, we were kind of, you know, a little bind. And she had, it was from uh, elementary school to high school. And they were having this little thing where, you know, you have to be dressed up and all that stuff. She didn't have a dress. I didn't have the money. And she wanted to have a nice dress. One of her favorite colors is green. Yeah. <laughs> green. Okay. And so I said, you pray and ask your father. I don't mean father there. I mean, father up there. She did. Okay? And before this event, someone came by the house and said, 
you know what? I was cleaning my closet, and I found this dress that I've never worn. Maybe Sharon can use it. And it was a very nice long dress, green, very pretty, and she liked it. Little things. God is concerned about every little thing. Amen? You heard the testimony of my husband when he had holes in his shoes. <laughs> okay? And now people just bring him shoes. He has more shoes than I do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> know your body what you shall put on. Okay. Is not your life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? Hello. You are his child. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? You, when you worry and worry, you get, you get a stomachache, you know? So it says here in verse 28. So why do you worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, they're beautiful. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Then it says here, now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Will he not take care of you? Okay, many times you say, yeah, he will. And then when something happens, oh. Of course, none of you are like that. You're so spiritual. And then it says in verse 31, therefore, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. Say, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we put on? Okay. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Here you see in this portion of Scripture, okay, the Father's provision, the Father's love, the Father's care. Okay? And then it says. But seek you first, the kingdom of God. If you receive Jesus, you are in the kingdom of God. Amen? And it says here, and his righteousness. You are in the kingdom of God. You are his righteousness. Amen? You have right standing with God. And then he says, and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. Amen? So don't worry. Don't worry. Worry does not come from God. Anxiety does not come from God. It comes from the devil. Okay? Now, if you look around you and you see what's happening, you see the things that are happening on the news, you will get worried. You will have anxiety if you allow it. Hello? Hello? But when you look in the word of God, it will go. You command worry and anxiety to go from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we have power over all devils in Jesus' name. And that includes worry and anxiety and fear. But if we don't use what God has given us, yeah, what can I say? Amen. What can I say? So, here you see... We don't have to worry. Isn't it nice? We don't have to be fearful. Amen? But you got to get in this word. Boy, this thing is heavy. Okay? you got to get in this word. If not, what can I say? Amen? 